All right. Okay. You guys, it's our first power plan of like a full week of the new year. So I'm super excited for this. I don't know about you, but I am so ready to get back to my normal routine. Um, I love having some extra time, but I'm also pulling my hair out, um, like not having my regular schedule. So what I want to make sure that we kick off today with is have you really sat down and thought about your goals? Have you taken the time to do a vision board? Have you taken the time to maybe update your IAMs? Um, and I am a big believer that those go together. Um, so what I want to do really quick is just ask you a question. And I shared this on my team and I want to find it so I say it correctly. And of course I probably won't now, but basically when you're thinking of your goals or you're thinking of your vision board, the number one most important thing that you need to think about is what do you want to bring into your life? So I think a lot of times we look at vision boards and we're like, oh, I'm going to get this fancy, shiny car, or I'm going to go on this fancy, shiny trip, whatever it is. But what is it that you want to bring in more of into your life? So when you're thinking about your goals, your I am, your vision board, whatever it is, your journal, whatever it is that you do, I want to take just a couple of minutes and I want you to start wording them differently um, or thinking of them differently moving forward. So we're going to take a few minutes to do our I am's, but when you think about your I am's, I want you to think goal oriented and what is it that you want to bring more into your life? So for example, if you've got that shiny, um, bright red Mercedes on your board, yes, that's a car. Yes, that's a particular car, but what is it that getting that car is going to bring into your life? So if you want that car because you want to bring more financial peace into your life, I want you to think of it that way. If you want to go on a trip to say um, California because you have some family there you haven't seen in forever, you want to bring more quality time with your family into your life. So you see what I'm saying? Like I know we can get kind of fixed on the actual item itself, but I want you to word your I am's or your goals, however you want to do it. I want you to think of it that way. What is it that you want to bring into your life more? Because shocker, sometimes what we think we want, for example, that shiny red car, may not be the thing that's actually going to bring us the feeling that we want. So if you, you know, maybe you want that shiny red Mercedes, but if you aren't um, truly bringing in, say, maybe a financial planner into your life or bringing in some sort of savings plan in your life, you're not really going to get the financial security that you want, that you think that car represents. So anyway, I'm going to be quiet. I'm going to give you guys a few minutes. Let's write down at least five things that we want to bring into our life. And if you're able to come up with the five really quickly, then kind of go underneath that and say, what are some things that would represent that? So for example, if I want to bring more financial security into my life, um, you know, A, B, C, A, uh, regular appointments with my financial advisor, B, um, a budget meeting monthly with my spouse, whatever, whatever it is that would bring you that. Like, let's, let's do that. So it uh, is, we're three minutes after, so I'm going to give you just a few minutes to do that. All right, if you guys are just hopping on, we're writing down a version of an I am in the fact, in the sense that we're saying what we want to bring more of into our life, whether it be bring more into your week, your month, your year, whatever it is that you're planning. Um, and my example was a lot of times when we think about our goals, we might be thinking the auto bonus and a bright, shiny red car. But in reality, what we're wanting to bring is financial freedom. And so what are some other ways you can bring that into your life that aren't necessarily wrapped around an object?
All right, you guys can keep writing, but I'm going to move, kind of keep moving ahead on our 54321. Um, so as always, we start off the 54321 with our reach outs and the number one easiest already laid out there for you, no thought process needed, our birthday reach outs. So you're going to want to go to your telephone or whatever your second devices that you have right now. And I want you have the whole week in front of you. So I want you to pull up the birthdays for this week and start putting the appropriate name on the appropriate date. And again, I know some like to go a day before, the day of, and the day after. You put them where you want them, but make sure their name is already on your sheet because when the day comes, you'll have no reason not to know. You, you won't even have to like pull up their name or pull up their birthday. You already know who you're reaching out to that day. So let's start with the easy peasy. You can finish up your um, version of your I am's and you can also start writing down your birthday. So then some of you will have a bunch and some of you will just have a couple. All right, you guys can continue on with that if you need. The next thing I wanna encourage you to do um, is to go into the stories on whether you're doing Instagram or Facebook, whatever one you prefer. I end up doing both of them to get to all these people. To me, the tricky part with stories, most of my thrivers use stories. So I have to purposely make myself sit down and scroll past those names so I don't get sucked into a cute picture of Laura's dogs or whatever, because I will I'll get sucked right into that stuff. So I want you to take a look and I, and I know I have an Android and sometimes this causes some different stuff, but when I pull up Facebook on my phone, the stories are up at the top next to me. Those first few right there, those are thrivers. So I'm going to scroll past them until I get to ta-da, a non-thriver. I'm going to click that button, watch her story. And I'm somehow, some way going to come up with a question to ask her. This one's kind of cheating. I mean, not cheating. I just got lucky. She's in Hawaii on vacation. So easily, where are you at? What's the beach called? I, you know, what time is it there? I'm whatever. You can come up with all kinds of stuff. But I'm going to challenge you for the next, it's nine minutes after, for the next three minutes, again, whether you do Instagram or Facebook, I don't care. But I want you to selectively choose the stories of non-thrivers and ask questions and if you don't feel like you can do all of the questions and all that stuff right now, you can just scroll through and see who you have that's a non-thriver that has put something on their story because you could comment on that today or probably most of tomorrow before it were to disappear. So let's spend a few days writing those names down. Um, and like, for example, tomorrow for my reach outs, I have two names written down and I have BD next to them because it's their birthday. And then I'm gonna write down this girl's name and I'm gonna put story vacation. Because again, that's, I'm getting, she's on vacation. She shared it in her story because let's say I go back tomorrow and her story has disappeared. She has messenger. I can still say, Hey, I saw your story yesterday. It looks amazing. Where are you guys staying? You know, blah, 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 blah. Um, so sometimes it's good to give yourself notes. So, you know, what you're, since we plan the week ahead, it's good to give yourself notes to trigger your brain come Friday. Like, why did I write that person down? So, um, all right, now it's 10 after, so I'm going to be quiet and you guys can start going through stories.
<laughs> oh, I clicked the story button. <laughs> Could you guys hear that? <laughs> People must be bored today. I have a lot more stories today than I did yesterday. Just a couple more minutes with your stories. Okay, so uh, moving forward, we have the follow ups. Now, I say this every week, and this is true. Your follow ups will come from your last few weeks of your reach outs. So that's why you keep your five, four, three, two, ones. You don't do a week and throw them away. So um, you're going to pull out an old five, four, three, two, one, and you're going to start pulling some names off of that. Who did you reach out to a couple weeks ago? Follow up with them. Oh, I thought for a second Sandra was talking to us. I saw her hand moving. She's on the phone. Um, so we're going to go ahead and start with that. Oh, I just asked one, one girl on her stories. She's having this amazing looking cocktail. And I'm like, where is this fabulous looking place? Oh, you no know, biggie, Sydney, Australia, whatever. Everybody's vacationing in all these amazing places. Right now. <laughs> That's cool. I'll put that on my board. No big deal. <laughs> all right. So find at least four people for tomorrow from your last couple of weeks even last month. I mean, there's a lot of people you probably talked to at the beginning of December that were like, oh, I don't have any money. Christmas is coming, blah, blah, blah. Now's the time to say, hey, I hope the holidays were great. I know money was tight. I've got this promo, whatever it is you might be making up as your promo. Um, you know, reach out and keep following up with them. And I was having a conversation earlier today with Danielle, and I see she's on here, at least her little face is. So I'm going to try to find it. So she was, um, don't be mad. I'm going to share your question. She was just asking about different ways to transition into three-way three -way messages with people. She said, all I can think of is like, you know, number one, when I ask a que when they ask a question to act like I don't know the answer and create a chat. The other one was to just randomly say, hey, I wanted you to meet so-and-so and hear her story. Um, and so I, I gave her just a couple of off the cuff. First of all, my advice was don't overthink it. Anytime someone asks you a question about Thrive, throw them in a three-way chat with somebody. All you have to do, and so this is my example, um, da, 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 lead off the chat with, you know, uh, like for example, hey Susan, this is Susie. She was asking about XYZ. Maybe she asked about the price. Maybe she asked about how it worked. Maybe she asked about if it had um, gluten. I don't know. Um, and I just wasn't 100% sure. She's looking to thrive for weight loss and better sleep. And I thought you could also give her an idea of how it helped you. So I'm saying I don't know the answer to the question. Maybe I do, maybe I don't. Um, and I'm also saying, hey, I know that, you know, you could, so I'm not, I think we overthink it too much. We start thinking that Susie's going to be mad that we put her in this chat with somebody she doesn't know, blah, 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 blah. And you just, you start wrapping yourself around this one person and this one question when really the more, the more you can take tiny little questions and throw them into group chats, the more you're going to start producing sales because, you know, will everyone respond to that? No, but if they go, if they ghost you on a three-way chat because you ask someone to answer their question, then they are not interested. If they are interested, they will be all for finding out whatever she's got to say. Um, and then the other one I gave her was, um, where is it at? So let's say they weren't asking you a question, but maybe you've been having conversations with them and they've, they've been bringing up things about how um, they want to lose weight or they want better nutrition or all those kind of stuff. You, then you can put them in a chat and be like, hey, Susie, I know we've been talking about your goal of sleeping better. And it reminded me of my friend, Tammy. She's been using Thrive for her sleep and I thought she could tell you how it worked for her. Again, we're not selling anything. You're just like, you know what? We talked about this and my friend went through the same thing. So again, um, those are just some quick ways that you can take some of your reach outs or your follow-ups and actually put them in chats. Like 
when someone responds back that they're not sleeping well or they're, or yeah, I'm totally trying to lose weight or I want to do the sugar challenge. If any of you are in the sugar challenge um, that Brittany Williams started with us, those are the people who you could easily throw into a three-way chat. They've expressed a concern or a goal and you're not selling them Thrive. You're just saying, you know, I know you want to lose weight and I know my friend Tammy was using this product Thrive to help lose weight and I thought she could tell you about it. And again, if they ghost you, they weren't, they weren't interested to begin with. So don't overthink the whole putting them into chats. Um, I kind of jumped ahead. This is connecting with a leader, but I just think it goes hand in hand with the follow-ups and the, the uh, reach outs. You know, the reach outs are going to start the conversations. Some of them are going to go into three-way chats. Some of them are going to just die right there. Then you're going to try on the follow-up three, four weeks later, and some of it's going to go into a chat. Some of it's going to die right there. It's okay. The more balls you have in the air, the more conversations you have going. Let's say you want to have a customer this week. You got to work backwards. If I want one customer, I'm probably going to have to have about five chats. If I want five chats, you know how many conversations I have to get started this week? So don't get wrapped up in one person. And you know, like so many times I'll get a message. Sally's not calling me back. Sally's not returning my message. She's not, you know, she's not committing. She acted like she wanted to do it. What am I going to do? Move on past Sally. Go back to all these other names. That's why you're doing five reach outs a day. You should have a plethora. If your brand's making new, you probably don't. And that's okay. You'll get there. But you should have a plethora of names that you can keep cycling through. And even if you are brand new and you don't have names yet, you're probably on Facebook or Instagram. So you've got names. So start using your names. The more people you talk to, the more chances you're going to have. And yes, there's going to be a lot of no's, but you guys, that's okay. People think sales is all about yes, and it's not. Like, obviously, getting the sale is about yes, and your job as a salesperson is to get someone to the yes, but customers are all about no. So you have to know what comes with the territory, and that's okay. Most of you probably did not say yes when you were first introduced. Laura Wordsman, be quiet. When you were first introduced to Thrive. <laughs> so think about that. All right, so we've done our reach outs, our follow ups. Um, I jumped ahead about connecting with a leader, but I, I, because I wanna go back to that really quick, I think people start to panic about connecting with a leader. I'm connecting a person with a leader. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Okay, basically anyone in this company that you know, whether it's upline, downline, sideline, they're a leader in this company, right? We're all self proclaimed leaders because we are all self employed, and that's what self employed people do. <laughs> You're just connecting somebody with somebody else. And the more you do that, the more, the more opportunities you take to do that, the more opportunities to sell you're going to have. Um, so now the other thing I want to talk to you guys about are our social media posts. I have been working, it's so, it sounds so funny, I'm going to say I've been working so hard. Okay, it's a Facebook post, it's not that big of a deal. But I made it my goal, somehow subconsciously, I never said it out loud or wrote it down, but it's sticking. But basically to make sure I'm asking at least one question a day and I'm trying not to be cheesy, right? Cause you see the ones where people are like, they just, you can tell they Pinterest the question and they're asking it. Um, but so for example, I did actually to kick off the year, I was cheesy and I did steal a post and I can't remember now who I stole it from, but basically it was like in this year, what category do you fall into? Buying a car, buying a house, starting a business, getting married, blah, blah, blah. Because here's the thing you got to remember. People like to talk about themselves, especially in the new year. So if somebody woke up on 2020 and like, oh my gosh, you guys, this is the year I'm finally buying my house. They want to tell somebody that. They, th that's exciting. That's something they want to share. So I got, um, I only got 17 comments on that one, but I will also say it was a holiday. But I still felt good because again, everyone who responded had something that they wanted to talk about. Um, I asked a question about decluttering. The next day I asked about people making lists. Who's a list maker? And it turns out, if you're my friend, you're a list maker. It must be why we're friends. Um, then I threw in the standard, hey, are you thriving for free? Because it was free credit day. Then I threw in the, what's your favorite way to wind down after a busy day? That was kind of a cheesy one, but you guys, I got 64 comments on it. Everybody has a way that they like to wind down more so than even I realized. Um, the next day, I asked people to share their vision boards. Some people sh actually shared their boards. Some people just shared the thought that they liked that idea that they could see other boards. Um, then I asked people to tell me about where they're traveling this year. Trust me, if you got a vacation on the books, people want to talk about it. And then I asked about, oh, today. <laughs> today I'm already up to 48 comments because I asked a technology question that really has me stumped. So my point in this is make sure when you're doing a Facebook post, it's okay. I mean, and there's a couple I scrolled past where there was just a funny quote or something hilarious. 
it's okay to have that stuff. So people get an idea of who you are, what you think is funny, but you've got to make your Facebook or your Instagram interactive because if not, because you know people like this, you know people who they post on Facebook and it's just something funny or it's a meme, which I guess is something funny, but you know what I mean? Like there's never anything there about them. Like nothing. Like it's the people that we talk about that you want to send a reach out to, but you're like, I got nothing because they've got nothing on their Facebook that helps me understand anything about them. So if you start asking questions or encouraging people to give you information, um, there's a slightly crude saying, but you know, opinions, everyone has them. They're a lot like that one body part because everyone has them. Everybody does have an opinion or an idea or a thought. And if you open it up to them to share, you're going to get more action on your page. Now, I'm not going to go over why it's important to have action on your page because obviously you know that if people aren't seeing your stuff, it doesn't matter what you're posting. But again, through these conversations, um, I'm making sure that my social media posts are interactive, not just, I mean, yes, there's an occasional ha ha, but they've got to be, even the ha ha's can be interactive. You know, you could, um, there's that sassy lady quote, funny meme thing going around. And so you can just ask people what their sassy lady quote would be or whatever, like, just make sure you're not just throwing out a post to be declaring something like use your Facebook as a way to keep interaction going with people. Um, you know, yes, I, I always love sharing a picture of my nephews, but I'm not going to get a new customer most likely out of sharing another picture of my nephews, but asking this thing about technology and I was specific to like, I want something compact and small that I can use while I'm working out. I have so many people who I know are runners or, and maybe I didn't know, but now I know they're runners um, or they're big into working out and all this. So I have, so you see what I'm saying? Like if you ask questions, new people are going to comment. The same people comment on my nephews all the time. This question brought in new people. So I'm just encouraging you when you get to your social media, I actually put above my, where it says on the page, social media, it actually says, ask a question as a reminder, because I think it's really easy to share a cute picture or share something funny, but then I can sit there at the end of the day and be like, oh hell, I didn't have any kind of communication with anybody because I really didn't, I didn't ask anybody to communicate with me. So keep that in mind whenever you're doing your social media, you want to always be asking questions. Um, we do not, let me double check my calendar. We don't have an auto ship coming up, so you don't have to worry about that right now. But I am going to say this, it's something that I like to do um, after an auto ship because I know we're all excited prior to an auto ship. Send a thank you to the people who auto shipped with you today. It can be a written thank you. It can be an email, a text message. You can even get crazy and throw in, I don't know, a packet of blast or something. But send a thank you to the person who auto shipped with you today. It's so simple. You know what it means to you to get a thank you. And so it definitely means that much to them as well. Um, I actually had a lady who was going to cancel her auto ship yesterday because her husband got injured and he is self-employed and they don't, they don't have money coming in right now. And she's been a like full three steps plus some sculpt plus, I mean, she's just been a big shopper. And so I was like, you know what? I totally get it. We're self-employed too. You know, here's it feel, feel felt found. I know exactly how you feel because I, I felt that way too. You know, the few days I laid in the bed with my gallbladder, thanks to Thrive, I can make money from the bedroom, but I couldn't make it at our other place. Um, what I found was instead of getting completely off track, if you at least can dedicate maybe $60 to the capsules, we can keep you in, you know, keep you feeling good. And sure enough, she auto shipped her, her capsules. She took the rest of it off, but A, I saved a customer and B, she wrote me back the nicest note about thank you for being understanding and not being mad at her. Of course I'm not mad at her. She's a customer. She has spent money with me. So it's so important to meet people where they are and thank them for their business. I just, I preach this so much because I basically preach it to myself so much, but it's so important to thank your customers and to thank your team because without them, you don't have a job, you don't have a business. So keep that in mind. So anyone who auto ship with you today, make sure their name is written down for tomorrow and reach out and just something so simple. Hey, I saw your auto ship went through and maybe even by tomorrow, if you can, if you know, if you wait till the tracking number pops up, you can even say, I saw your auto ship went through we're looking at an estimated delivery of Thursday. If you need anything in between now and then, just let me know. Easy peasy, not overthinking it, but just being kind and thanking someone. All right, so we have five minutes. This is like the fastest I've ever done it. If anybody has anything they want to add, um, I'm more than happy. Poor Sandra. I I'm, I'm appreciate you being here. I know you're not feeling well. She's coughing her little head off, but that's all right. Um, 
Anyone, I'm sorry, I had a thought and then I interrupted my own self. Does anybody have anything they want to add? Any questions, anything coming up? Okay, I want to encourage this in the last four minutes that we're together. Number one, do you have a local schedule for the month of January? Number two, do you have some sort of team chat, Zoom, live, whatever planned with your team this week? Number three, do you have some sort of promo in your back pocket or even possibly in graphic form ready to roll that you can start shooting out to your team, maybe a specific leg of your team um, or a specific group of customers? Maybe it's customers who haven't ordered in six months or more, which again, you can find all that information in your cloud, click customers, go to the date of last order, scroll down. Anybody that's not ordered in the last six months or more, you can have a promo just for them. Maybe you got free shipping, maybe you're offering a free product, whatever, it's your business, you get creative and you think about it. But do you have something like that going on? We are so incredibly spoiled by Lavelle. I mean, beyond spoiled. Like, I thought we were spoiled a few years ago, but it has reached a whole new level in the last year or so. When I woke up on Saturday morning and there wasn't a promo, I was literally like, what, huh? <laughs> oh, I guess I'll make my own promo. <laughs> So I sent one out to my team because it took me by surprise that it was a weekend without a promo. So don't let all that goodness spoil you. Keep your head in the game about what business you want to create. Yes, it's great to get a promo and ride that wave, but you know, Lavelle might push a promo one week that's specific to new promoters and you might be looking for customers. So you always need to know what you're looking for and how you're trying to grow your business and then work your promos around that. But so those are just some things in closing I want you to think about. Do you have your local? Do you have your team chat, team Zoom, team whatever you want to call it? Um, and do you have some sort of promo ready to go for whoever it is that you're looking for this week? Um, with that, I will post this recording as soon as it's done. Thank you guys for being on here early with me today. We have some friends who do not live here anymore, but they surprised us and want to have dinner tonight. So they're in town, so we're going to go. Um, so there's Monday morning. Monday morning motivational in the morning. Make sure you catch that dream team. You know, we always have our thing tomorrow night. Um, and then Susan usually has her thing Monday nights also. So there's plenty of opportunities for you guys. Just, you know, what is it? You got to immerse yourself, be there and be a part of it. And uh, with that, we'll see you later. Bye.